Hi there. In this video, we'll learn about the rectangular hyperbolic functions. These are uh, functions that are also used in our economic analysis. So primarily a little bit of introduction to these. Let us try to do a little bit of etymology of the word hyperbola. Hyperbola basically is composed of two uh, words. One is hyper, other is bola. Hyper means beyond and bola means through. Because parabola is alongside a throw, as uh, para means alongside and bola means throw. So parabola is here in this diagram, but hyperbola is above it. So this is why it is called hyperbola, because it is beyond the parabola. And parabola is actually alongside the throw. So this is how parabola and hyperbola are slightly different as it is wider than the parabola. So now rectangular hyperbolas, their uh, graphs, there are two possibilities that we are going to consider here. First is that uh, the standard form should be considered. The product of the two variables involved should be equal to a constant where k is representing that constant. x and y definitely are the dependent and independent variables that are not representing uh, their separate locations in right hand side and left hand side, but they are clustered on the left hand side. Now there are two possibilities of uh, this uh, uh, graph. It can be either like this or it can be like that. This will happen if the value of k is positive that is the right hand side is positive. It means that it will lie in the first quadrant where both of the uh, variables that is x and y are positive and in the third quadrant where both of the variables they are negative. So when we multiply two positive values the answer will be positive like here and if we multiply two negative values the answer will again be positive. So this is why it is a positive answer on the right hand side and the location is such that the product of the two values that is x and y would be positive. But when uh, the uh, graphs they are located in the second and the fourth quadrant, we know that here y will be negative and here x will, uh, it, here y will be negative and here x will be negative, which means that one of them would be negative and their product hence would be a negative value that is k will be less than zero. So in this is how the formation of the graph can be understood. We simply need to focus on the value of k. If it is positive this will be the formation and if it is negative then this will be the formation. The diagrams that we saw, they are basically representing asymptotes. So they are asymptotes to y-axis and x-axis in different places. Again, uh, asymptote to x-axis and asymptote to y-axis. And now let's focus on the economic examples. Um, the very first example would be aggregate demand, that is AD curve. And here we are, the graph of it, uh, price level, the general price level, and the national income. And then we have this uh, av uh, aggregate demand curve. It's a rectangular hyperbola. As you can see, it's uh, forming a kind of a symptot that will be uh, getting close to x-axis. That is where the national income is placed. And this will be an, an asymptote to y-axis where the general price level is plotted. Then we have uh, another e economic example in which we have the demand curve, as you can see demand curve in its more uh, realistic form is a rectangular hyperbola generating asymptotes to x and y and here we have gen a price level and this is the quantity demanded. So uh, a feature of uh, such rectangular hyperbolic demand curve is that the elasticity of demand would be unity that is one at all of the points. So this is a salient feature of a demand curve that makes a rectangular hyperbola. 
now another example in which we have the average uh, fixed cost as the rectangular hyperbolic diagram uh, but be above that we have total fixed cost and uh, definitely on x-axis we have output so when we make average fixed cost from it it will become like this definitely as we start dividing this constant value because total fixed cost is fixed at this level that is for example 100 and when we start dividing it at various levels of output primarily it will be 100 because it will be divided by 0 but then it will be divided uh, that will be divided by 1 and then it will be divided by 2 and 3 so as we go from left to right it will be divided by higher values and in, due to that the answer of it will decline further and further as it gets close to the x-axis where the output is plotted so it is to be noted that it doesn't cut the x-axis because this fraction will reduce further and further but will not become negative so this is why this asymptote will come into being which is the diagram of a rectangular hyperbolic function so this is the um, average fixed cost which is another example of the rectangular uh, hyperbolic functions this this was the previous example and this is another example and this was the depiction of the asymptotes the difference between parabola and hyperbola and this is the introduction to rectangular hyperbolic functions.